in North Europe, you have 80% of populations that do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have, for instance, in Britain, the fastest growing religion is atheism. And I'm going to tell you why I consider it a religion in a minute. So the point here is, brothers and sisters, this is a force to be reckoned with. And obviously, we should not deal with this force in a discourse that you can describe as debating. Because debate is not da'wah. Debates is social engineering. Now, brothers and sisters, unfortunately, there's approximately one billion atheists on this planet now. We used to think it was a minority position, but it's considered the fifth biggest religion in the world. And there has been amazing and interesting and fascinating mass movement since post 9-11, based on certain leaders, books, and an online narrative and they have formed what I would call the tsunami that is trying to engulf the hearts and minds of theists, people who believe in religion, specifically the Muslims. And our initial responses was, you know, leave them alone. It's not a big deal. Just carry on doing what you're doing. But unfortunately, 10 years on, 12 years on, we have an increase of atheism in Europe by millions. According to the London Times, you have a quarter of a million Muslims leaving the religion as a result. And their movement is working. They have the Atheist Alliance Global Network. I was in Pakistan the other day. Not literally the other day, but a few months ago. <laughs> I was in Lahore. Lums, the Oxford University of Pakistan. And there's an atheist movement going on there. You have atheist students challenging the kind of core beliefs of Islam. You even have an atheist group in Saudi Arabia. Sheikh Sajid, he WhatsApped me and said, there's something going on, Hamza. There was a private gathering of ulama to deal with the 6% and growing atheists in Saudi Arabia. In North Europe, you have 80% of populations that do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have, for instance, in Britain, the fastest growing religion is atheism. And I'm going to tell you why I consider it a religion in a minute. So the point here is, brothers and sisters, this is a force to be reckoned with. And obviously, we should not deal with this force in a discourse that you can describe as debating. Because debates is not da'wah. Debates is social engineering. Meeting at a local cafe in the city of Alexandria. These young Egyptians are discussing an unusual and even taboo topic, atheism the rejection of a belief in God. They want society to acknowledge their atheism rather than reject it. Their aim is to be seen as a legitimate part of Egypt's community. I, I don't want to, uh, to leave Egypt. I want to uh, be an atheist in my country, with my family and my job. Even talking publicly about atheism can provoke hostile reactions. <laughs> Atheism is still widely unaccepted in Egyptian society, and many believers find it an alien and disturbing concept. I'm having a problem with my father. He cannot accept the fact that other people might have different beliefs. Most of these atheists are young. Social media has made it easier to connect with like-minded people and to combat the sense of isolation. Some have had to reject deeply held beliefs after growing up in conservative and religious environments. 
I learned the Quran by heart. My father is bearded and my mother covers her face and so does my younger sister. My brothers are also bearded. I was raised in a religious environment. But after reading a lot, I rejected religion and even the interpretation of the Quran. Statistics on the exact number of atheists in the country are difficult to obtain. But some religious leaders believe that extremism is playing a significant role in pushing people away from Islam. As much as we detest atheism, we also detest extremism and clinging on to formalities which push people away from religion. We blame the extremists for making some people think that religion is inflexible. The atheists we met say they want people to speak up. But their deepest hope is that a new Egypt will give them the freedom to discuss their ideas openly without social stigma. Hadi Al Alawi, BBC News. There's a battle going on in Muslim communities in Britain and across the Islamic world. A hidden struggle between religious fundamentalists and a group of people who are heading in the opposite direction. They are ex-Muslims, people who are leaving Islam entirely. They are forced to live in the shadows. They locked me in the house and they hit me. I don't think it would be that hard for them to kill me. I have four head stabs, um, like machete ones on my head. You are going to get shunned. You are going to get mistreated. I found an underground resistance movement who defy fundamentalists here and across the Islamic world. Internet and social media is our battleground. Our numbers are growing each and every day. Just because we're silent doesn't mean we don't exist. The hellfire is waiting for anyone who is rejecting Allah and his messenger. Moreover, their families, they should not continue having any kind of relationship with them. This is a time bomb of young people who are being traumatized, really. I'm the author of a book called The Atheist Muslim, A Journey from Religion to Reason. The title is an obvious contradiction. It's intentional and obvious. And there are a lot of geniuses uh, that have pointed out to me that, hey, this is a contradiction, you know? They never complained about the movie Back to the Future for some reason. The Atheist Muslim, though, really gets to them. The thing is, uh, there are millions, and that's shown by polling data. There are millions of atheists, agnostics, um, secularists, free thinkers in the Muslim world, living in Muslim majority countries right now, um, who have to publicly identify as Muslims. If they speak up against it, if they express their views openly, they'll get disowned by their families, they can get marginalized by their communities, they lose their friends, uh, they can be imprisoned, they can be executed. Um, atheism is punishable by death in 13 countries around the world, all of which are Muslim majorities, majority countries. Um, and the cost of them coming out and publicly speaking their views, right, and shaking off the Muslim label are really, really, the consequences are very dire. Uh, so these are the atheist Muslims. There are a few who've spoken up about it. Like there's Raif Badawi, who's a blogger in Saudi Arabia, a Saudi blogger who started a website called Free Saudi Liberals. And that spoke about secularism. They threw him in jail. He's serving a 10 year sentence he's, and he's been sentenced to a thousand lashes. Right? He's been separated from his his family and his children 
uh, simply for doing exactly what I do, right? Which is write and write about secularism and his activism. So there are bloggers in Bangladesh right, who have been hacked to death in the streets by Islamic fundamentalist lunatics simply for writing what they thought, right? So they, there probably are more. There are probably many, many more, but they don't want to suffer the same fate. So you're not going to hear from them. We don't hear from them. I have received, if I showed you my inbox, I've received thousands and thousands of emails and messages uh, from atheists, closeted atheists in Egypt, in Malaysia, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Bangladesh, all of these countries. And I, I hear from them all the time. When I was writing the book, they were telling me, can you please say this? Can you make sure you mention this or that? Because I can't say it here. Uh, so so there, there are definitely a lot of them. And just to put numbers on it, and these are probably still underrepresented, is uh, there was a Gallup poll um, recently, a couple of years ago, uh, that showed that Saudi Arabia, the birthplace of Islam, Muhammad and the Quran, 19% of people identify as non-religious there, 19%. To compare, that's, uh, that same number is 15% in Italy. Right? In Saudi Arabia, 5% of people identify it as confirmed atheists. And in the United States, that number is also 5%. So Saudi Arabia has a population of about 20 million people. That's 1 million people in Saudi Arabia who identify as confirmed atheists. A Pew study published in 2015 reported that the number of Americans who don't affiliate themselves with a religion jumped by almost 35%. That's about 72 million Americans who consider themselves irreligious and may be atheist, agnostic, or spiritual but unaffiliated. And worldwide, 13% of people considered themselves convinced atheists, according to a 2012 Gallup International poll. So why is atheism more popular than ever? Well, first, it's important to understand that atheists are distinct from the religiously unaffiliated. Atheists firmly believe that there is no higher power. This is not to be confused with agnostics who are uncertain of the existence of a higher power. However, many people use the two terms interchangeably. For much of history, atheism has been considered a taboo around the world. In medieval times, it wasn't uncommon for atheists and other free thinkers to be burned at the stake for heresy. And even today, atheists can still be executed for their beliefs in about 13 countries in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Despite their growing popularity, negative stigmas and stereotypes also continue to affect atheists and the religiously unaffiliated, even in developed countries like the United States. However, there have been growing trends away from religion in America and many other Western nations. Pew has attributed the change to the maturing millennial generation, of whom more than 30% identify as non-religious. Comparatively, only about 11% of the silent generation, born between 1928 and 1940, 45 is non-religious. Other news sources have noted that for millennials, the rise in atheism has corresponded to increased acceptance of things like gay marriage and abortion. Conversely, many religious institutions still don't accept these practices, and this conflict of ideas could indicate that millennials are looking away from religions which exclude themselves or their peers. So well, I'm joined by Katie Harrison, the director of the Faith Research Centre at Comrades, and by Andrew Copson, the chief executive of Humanists UK. Very good evening to you both. Um, so, Katie, um, individually, we're becoming more secular, it seems, and quite rapidly as well. Is that a good thing? I think it's fascinating to see the significance of this statistic, 53% yeah. of adults in Britain, Britain identifying as no religion. I think it's, it's the highest that we've seen. We saw 51% in 2009, and then between 2010 to 16, we saw a fluctuation between 48 to 50%. So we, we are around halfway and have been for, for a little while. And I think that um, certainly when you do more qualitative work with many people, what you find is that perhaps historically some people, older generations, have ticked the box 
Orthodox Christian, identified as Church of England in much of Britain, uh, particularly in England itself, because that's what you do, don't you? Whereas we have a, a different approach perhaps today, and younger people certainly, where they're actively deciding when they're doing a survey or being asked, yeah, actually, who do I think I am? Uh, do I identify with a religion? And perhaps a bit less of the nominal uh, culture that we might have seen in previous generations. So that's one of the things that we often find when we probe further yeah. in asking these sorts of questions. But same question to you, Andrew. A good thing. I mean, must be from your point of view that more and more people identify with no religion whatsoever. Well, I think it's definitely good, as, as Kate just said, that more people are thinking about this and are being thoughtful. And obviously, I think that the world we live in uh, today, more and more people are finding that religion is not something they can believe in intellectually. It's not something that gives them any basis for their values. It's not something that matters to their to their sense of meaning. Um, so to that extent, I think um, it is a positive development. Of course, I don't just want people not to have religion. I want them to have positive uh, humanist beliefs. We'll get on to the uh, point, and I know, you, yeah. I, I know it's more about the role religion plays in society as a whole yes. that you're concerned about. But just uh, staying with the individuals for the time being, Katie, it's not as if people, well, it is as if people, I suppose, are becoming less formally religious, but there's still an awful lot of spirituality out there, so to speak. Yes, there is, and there's a lot of belief, and yeah. there's a lot of behaviour of different kinds, which perhaps is less formally linked to an identity now, a religious identity, than historically it would have been. Um, so, for example, we uh, asked people earlier this year about beliefs in life after death, that sort of thing, and 21% of people who identified as no religion believed in some sort of life after death. So perhaps those people were not completely un unbelieving in everything they had found a way to make sense of the world that's perhaps a bit more syncretic they pick and choose different things that they believe in or different things that they do um, that help them to make sense of the world and embrace a sense of spirituality whereas um, historically we would have seen much more formal alignment with a religion and therefore um, a sense of what that doctrine and theology was and, and behavior that goes with that but equally right. um, we'll, we'll wait to see as the, as the rest of this British social attitudes data comes out